Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where we know that finding discounted properties is the most proven path to financial freedom. And I am telling you this, if I can do this business, so can you. So let's get started. All right. I am your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, Mr. Talk to People. And this conversation, this podcast is going to blow your mind because I am telling you this, you find wholesaling, you discover wholesaling and wholesaling is the foundation sourcing. All wholesaling is, is finding and sourcing discounted properties. And once you have that skill, once you have that ability in your business, you are unstoppable. There's so many different things that you can build off of that foundation of finding discounted properties. You can flip properties. You can build your rental portfolio. You can be a hard money or a private money lender, and you can be a developer. And that's what leads me to this incredible guest that I have on the show. I've been waiting a long time. I've been watching this guy over the last three years, and he is truly on a rocket ship going from making cold calls to developing multi-million dollar castles in Boise, Idaho. It is my pleasure to introduce the owner of Taylor Jean Homes, Casey Ames Thank to you, the sir. Wholesaling Inc. podcast. Thank you. For How are you, me. brother? I'm good. I am excited. Always a pleasure. This is, I mean, this has been an incredible journey. I mean, you literally, I'm watching you over the last 36 months, like completely, completely go into a different stratosphere when it comes to being a real estate entrepreneur. You're taking big risks, getting big rewards, getting big, take, getting uh, not only building a incredible house building company, but also wholesaling, also like just building your wealth. Talk to me. Talk to me about what's going on in your life. Yeah. Um, forever grateful. You know, I think when you get to a certain level, which you have gotten to that level and have been at some time, uh, you don't really know what the ripple effect is, right? And you and I knew each other some years ago. 2017. Not a, like some interaction, friendly, but no, not a crazy amount of interaction, right? But everything that you said resonated and I took it really serious. And for me, it wasn't a focus of like, oh, I'm trying to get rich. It's never been about that for me. Mm -hmm. I just I just don't care enough about it, right? Um, for me, it was like, it's time to propel us to where, and I'm not as good as it, I'm not as good uh, I wasn't as good then as I am now at designing my life, you know, my business to suit my life. But there is still a seed in there that was like, you know, this isn't about the money. I just want to be able to like go boating and pay for it. I don't want to be serving tables on a Sunday while my football team's playing or whatever. Right. And so um, we listened to everything that you said. Uh, I guess we'll just jump into the story. I We'll just jump into the story. I um, started wholesaling in the Phoenix market. I was living in Boise, Idaho. My mom was on fire. Mm -hmm. um, and you know my mom. Kristen, One of my first students. Yeah, yeah, Chris and Cindy Fagan. One of the... Yeah. The and I mean, they might have been like the third, number three, for real. Yeah. Yeah, to join the TTP family. Yep. Be beautiful people. And um, so she was on fire. And she was also listening to everything that you were saying and implementing everything that you were saying. Fast forward like three or four months, I'm serving tables and my mom's like, uh, she's like, hey, you'd be really good at this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, mom, you always got some idea. You know what I mean? Like, give me a break. I'm doing the best I can type of thing, right? Um, and so God was like kind of prevalent in my, not kind of, he was really prevalent in my life. Uh, he still is to this day, but at that point is really when he started to like seep in. And I just knew there was something was shining on it, right? And so I started reading, um, I see Bob Berg's Go-Giver right mm -hmm. there. I started reading uh, Gaines' is for Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. And what I noticed was that not only was I receiving um, a monetary gain off the tithing, um, my heart was changing and the tithing started to, and this is like months later, right? I've been practicing this for a few months. My heart has started to change to where I was no longer paying attention to the money. Okay. I was like really rewarded by the fact that like somebody got stoked because sure. I was hooking them up or whatever, whether it was a, you know, mother and women that were abandoned or whatever it is, children or whatever it was. And so, um, what that opened up for me is I realized that within tithing, it wasn't just a monetary thing. God was opening up time in my life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I put a post up the other day. It's ask, believe, and commit. 
mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. ask, believe, and commit. A hundred percent. If you're having problems in your life, ask God for it, believe that it's possible, and then commit to doing whatever you said you would do in that prayer, right? And so I I had said, give me an opportunity and I'm going ham. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm going, mm-hmm. I'm going ham. And um, he gave me the opportunity. Started with a, uh, so, and then <laughs> funny story, we were talking about this a second ago. So then you are about to release TTP. Mm-hmm. Thank God you did. You've probably made, uh, I don't even know, how, ma- how many students now? Do you know? Uh, Thousands? Over 2,000. Yeah. Yeah, over 2,000. Thousands of students' lives enriched. Yeah. Uh, so good on you for doing that. But uh, before TTP, we were crushing the Phoenix market. And then uh, we went to Belize. We were basking in our glory, mm-hmm. right? First time we'd really been getting paid in life, I think. Yeah. And, um, and not just from that, just family was together and, and whatnot. And you released TTP while we were in Belize. Mm-hmm came back Mm -hmm. phoenix market was forever changed (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. but you had been doing it for a while yeah right so yeah right so um when the market did that i i said mom i was in boise i was cold calling into phoenix i said mom like come up here i will i will take care of everyone like i will make sure it happens let's do it because you were making the calls I was making the calls into phoenix Phoenix. my mom was too i know yeah yeah but i was i was making a lot of calls too um Go to uh go to Boise um with your template, mm-hmm. if you will. Sure. Uh and my heart, which I think was aligned right. Uh I was from a go giver mentality and all I was really trying to focus on, my number one line in that go giver book is how do you create value? Well, you give more than you expect in compensation. Right. And you'll probably hear me say that later in this thing. I, it's just the main principle that I live by. And so we did that with our deals. So I get a deal at X percentage, let's say it's fifty percent or whatever. When I could have sold it for seventy, I'm selling it for sixty getting my buyer pool stoked that I got mm-hmm. deals, right? Plus I had been calling in the Phoenix market and they didn't know re- really what was going on. And so I came in hot, let's just say that. So we took your systems. Well, nobody was calling in Boise. Nobody you know? was doing anything <laughs> system or process right. oriented at that time. And Boise was really poised to really blow up. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful city. It's got a lot of opportunity. The economy's like really building up and 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 bubbling up and and getting more and more opportunities for people to work and live. And people are moving there because, you know, they can do things virtually. They can, you know, they can move around. They love the they love Boise, they love what it, the it, it's. It doesn't feel like it's a big city. It no. feels like it's charming and love. Like it's just a lovely area. Yeah, it's a little envi- It's a nice little environment. Yeah. And I, you remember like a year and a half ago or two years ago or something. I, I, I flew up and we were here in town. So I was like, hey, you want to grab lunch or yeah. whatever? And I, I came to the office and you and I were getting in a little debate about uh, trajectory and how you would how you would push out your system essentially. Yeah. And I was like, well, the thing is, is like Boise's not gun not the shotgun mentality right you got a sniper focus because the population isn't there right and it's growing but anyway point of the point of the story is that uh we we showed up and we decided that we were going to make a stand and we made that stand and so we opened gem state cash offer which is still i don't know i haven't checked i don't really care either but i i I would say the number one wholesale company in in Idaho, um, probably by a long shot. We do a, over a hundred annually. Have for the last you know many years consistently. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then we opened some other companies. So before I start going into the other com- companies, and we and we can like organically run yeah. through this or whatever. I'll just say this: no matter what you're doing, and if you are looking to let's say build homes, luxury homes, do flips, do big flips. Um, build big apartment buildings, subdivisions, whatever you're doing, you don't have to forget the wholesaling thing Mm -hmm. because the game changes and whether it changes from, you know, five figures to seven figures or eight figures, wholesaling is still a thing. Yep. It's a real part of it. It's a real thing. It's the foundation. I do seven, I do seven figure deals all the time where I'm you know, I might buy a subdivision that's 100% approved and then talk to my CEO and he's like, I'm not feeling it. And then I'll wholesale that subdivision off. Yep. And th- I'm promising you the profits are large. Mm-hmm. So so it's like, you know, and, and so I have a rule for 40 for 40 gets you 1.6 or four for 400 gets you 1.6. What do you want to do? And what creates more time? Four for 400. Yeah. So we've kind of navigated that way. We still do about an, 100 annually. But um, I would say for wholesaling, it's, 
I, I follow Jason Lewis, uh, him and I, him and I talk a lot and I, we're very similar in the fact that like mine's like 75, 85% networking. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. you know, Jason Lewis, another TTP alumni. Oh dude. Yeah. <laughs> a, a official OG. Yeah. And yeah. He, he was probably number four. He's, yeah. He's an amazing he is human incredible. being. So general. most of your deals are coming from referrals networks yeah right so he calls so him dude bro that. i him and i laugh about this all the time because i can never remember what he, i never remember what he calls him yeah but i call him dude bros but anyway you embody a team that goes out and just finds deals so we used to talk to people on the phone mm -hmm. we still talk to people yeah it's just not on the phone as much yeah and so the idea behind that was that uh, i had you know a whole bunch of callers i had multiple ac multiple acquisition managers i dispo vas all over the you know whatever and I just like wasn't getting the uh, efficiency that I wanted. Okay. And I wasn't getting, and there was some control issues, right? Like you build your baby up, Yep. whatever. Yeah. Um, and so it just wasn't working the way that I wanted. And so we ended up digressing off of that and we went to this model, which is mostly networking. And so I just have like thousands of bird dogs everywhere and they're mm -hmm. constantly bringing me birds. How do you find those people? Talking to people. Right. Yeah. I mean, is this network events? Is yeah, this so, they join a Facebook group? Are you doing like a meetup? Are you doing like letting people come into your office and you're training them up on how to find deals and how to do it? Like, yeah. So I always have trainees, I always have apprentices. And just for the record, I'm an old school dude. And so like I'm still of the school of apprentice. Okay. Apprentice used to be like three to five years. You I know. Like you're gonna go follow Tom. Yeah. You're gonna sit with them for three to five years, or right. you're not gonna really get that much. You right. might get like the the outer atmosphere, right? But you're not gonna really get in there and see how the lava works, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I have those people always working and watching me, and they might just be driving around in my car with me while I'm cruising. And, and a lot of it for me is the way we look at things. Mm -hmm. It's perception, okay. right? And um, so I can what does it. that mean? Yeah. So like, I'll, I'll just what is a good example for that? Like teardowns are a good example. Okay. Brent goes out and Brent's looking at this property and they want 450 for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. They mm -hmm. want 450 K for it. And he says, okay, well, if I put 60 into it, I'm at, you know, 510 mm -hmm. real estate commissions. I'm at 560. Mm -hmm. We could probably sell this thing for six, 610. That's a 50 K. Mm -hmm. You're questioning it, right? You're yeah. asking your COO, do you really want to move on this? Is it worth the time? Are our contractors free? I look at that same property with two lenses. I look at it. Do I want to wholesale it or sure. three lenses really? Do I want to wholesale it? Yep. Does my team need to work a project? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to just tear this thing down and build a $2.5 million house on it? Cause the lot's really big and it's in a really good area. Yep. Yeah. So it that's what I mean by that. So like I teach my guys to look at things from different levels, you know, because a lot of times you have a 600 square foot house and a dude's got two acres and he just isn't trying to move, but he'll sell it for what he thinks the house is worth. And you if you are in the business that I'm in, which is building big luxury homes, mm -hmm. I can put a 6,500 square foot house on that and 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 make an incredible amount of, yep. of money and feed a whole bunch of people and give to a whole bunch of charities and do all sorts of stuff. Right. And yep. so we just look at things a little different, I think. Um, it's well, you look at things different because you have the ability to look at things different, right? So it goes back to your. <laughs> I mean, you you have you have the track record, you have the team, you have the funds, you have the financial capabilities. When you're starting, you didn't have that, right? So four years ago, you didn't have that. Goes so back, you progress there. Goes back to your original question, right. which is like, how do you do that? Yes, there is some respect there. Mm -hmm. There is a body of work there. There's yes. uh, multiple, you know, companies that operate on a really high level. Um, everyone on the team knows what they're doing the culture is great and everything's good and and the the community recognizes that sure right? so there is a lot of that so when you're saying like the dude bros right mm -hmm. and they're going out and finding me deals well it's because casey ames with taylor gene homes closes properties right and if it makes sense he's going to close it reputation F five days cash done deal i don't we don't even need to mess with anything just call cassie at pioneer and we'll just take care of it right mm -hmm. like i don't even really need to hear about it just let's do it if the deal makes sense right yep and they know that. So I don't want to lead people down the path where you can just go like wild west right. and start shooting stuff up. You got to earn your stripes. Um, but so does that start with your wholesaling deal? Creating and value. You start, and then you start flipping? Creating value. Yes. And okay. and then I start flipping. Right. So No, no, no. Give me tactical because I mean this, like I get the mindset, mm -hmm. but the, the tactical, you go from wholesaling properties to you do your first flip and then you do a good product. And then you do a couple more and you're starting to build almost like a resume 
that says, hey, listen, I can do this. And then you start raising money. Right. Okay. So start raising money probably around the first flip. And um, it was the idea was always because I thought I had the I thought and I was wrong, but I thought I had the wholesale thing figured out as far as what the business looked like. Right. Okay. I moved too quick. And just be careful. Anyone who's setting up multiple businesses, you can kill both businesses by moving too fast. It will happen if you think you're better than it. Sorry about you. You're going to learn. A hundred percent. I almost did that. God was good and gave me a little insight and I came in and I fixed the wholesale company before it died, but it, it almost happened. Um, started flipping. I'm aggressive. So we went from one to like four right away and we were doing like four. One of them was a new build. So I started doing new construction like right off the rip, right? Um, and then that kind of came into just like a... Was that scary? No. I mean, you're just, was it like a vacant lot or did you tear down a house? And no, have to build but a I came from house? nothing. Right. Like nothing. Explain that. Well, yes. I mean, it's a long story, but like, you remember the feeling that you, is it an open thing? What happened to you in like, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. Losing everything in, yeah, the, in the crash. Yeah. I just oh, didn't know where. 100%. I didn't know where we were at. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to oh, go. Blah, blah, no, blah, no, blah. no, no, bro. Like, okay. So I had lost everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. I had nothing. My my wife and I were uh, not together. She was my girlfriend at the time. I had kids. I just wasn't doing too well. The story. I lost two brothers. Is what happened in my twenties, and I just didn't take it very well. Mm -hmm. So that's why my parents moved out to Arizona. Mm -hmm. God is really good. He stewarded them there. They met you. So on and the story gets threaded but right. um that's what happened so like fear no not really right. I, was, I was hungry i love it i was hungry i love this yeah that's I, what i'm talking about i was hungry yes. and anything in my way was getting removed and, okay. and that's just how it was and and not on like a um negative like gangster mentality no. type thing but it was just like at the end of the day we were here to do a job and we're going to get our job done and then we need to review our job and find out what we could have done better and that was just the mythology through the whole or the methodology through the whole thing and so we went from that to like five and eventually we got up to like 20 at a time right we're running like 20 houses at a time bangerang and still doing 100 wholesales um we're moving and, and I, these ha most... I hated it bro yeah hated it too much action just too much action and there had to be a smarter way yeah like there just had to be a better way is, and it, so... is it because you wanted to control it all i mean were you in it <sighs> well or was i wasn't it just... I wasn't wise enough at the time. I, I just hadn't evolved enough at the time to do what I probably could do now. But even though that I have now, I still wouldn't do it. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's it's this. I, w I want to like remain really humble and I don't mm -hmm. mean I just want to be real raw with it. Like to me, it's like pocket change. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the money is essentially but like $40,000 a piece is a massive amount of money. You can do a lot of good with it. It's not that. But when I'm looking like it's peanuts to an elephant to what I'm trying to accomplish. Right. So I'm like, if we're going to be born burning 40k profits at 20 at a time and we're going to do 70 a year like how many years does that take to me to get what i want to do to get my family what they want to do to then go do ministry and do all the things that we want to do bro i'm like 70 years old by the time i get to retire and it's not happening right <laughs> so, right. so it's not happening so um so then so then i what happened was um everyone started doing the same flips mm -hmm. they all look the same mm -hmm. right and I, I, I just like, I went in, I meditate a lot. And so I was like praying and meditating. And like, the thing was like, do something different was just there. So I'm like, okay. I didn't know what that was at the time, but we just started mixing up the, the tile ideas and stuff. Right. And this mm -hmm. is kind of where the creative force started to come into me a little bit. And I didn't, I had it like with speaking and I had it with some other stuff, business arrangement and stuff, but never with design. And so we started running that real quick and our houses were selling like over everyone else's way over asking five times. Like sometimes they would just get like 10 offers, right? It was just crazy. And other people that were really good looking flips would just be sitting there. Yeah. And I'm like, there's something to this. Mm -hmm. COVID happens and um, I have 22 houses. I'm in Mexico with my family and I'm not really stressed, but I'm like, is this the moment? Like, did I, did I not pay attention? Everyone was telling me to pay attention. Was I, I and I do. But, Is this the moment when the market shifts? Yeah. And well, you get stuck holding these well, 22? Here's what I said. When I right. first met you and when I did everything and I heard your story, and this is what I was talking about, about the ripple is like, sometimes you don't even know what people grab onto. Yep. I heard you very clear when you got sideswiped. Mm -hmm. You were running it. Yep. Things were good. Yeah. Right. So I was like, I, I heard that and it's resonated with me. So I, I pride myself in being smart. 
I pride myself in learning the markets, not just mine. Sure. Right. Like I'm watching San Diego all the time. I'm watching Phoenix all the time. I'm watching like Denver and all these other places. So anyway, but we were in Mexico lamping it up and I'm like, I'm like, did I get caught? Did I, did I do too much? Was I not paying attention? Mm -hmm. And I'd also always said when the correction does come, I want to have enough cash to buy as many rentals as I want. Right. And in some ways we were there, but I I had all my money in properties. Right. So. Anyway, it wasn't the moment, but when we got back home from Mexico, uh, thank God we made it back because they were like, no, you're not going to be able to fly mm-hmm. for a little while. I was like, uh, okay, we can, st- <laughs> yeah. if we're going to go out, might as well go out in style, yeah. right? Yeah. No. Well, so I get back and um, we had two choices. It was either sit on our hands and worry or go. Yeah. And so we went yeah. and um, I realized right then that I was in the wrong game and uh, so that's when we started doing luxury homes and we started doing big luxury homes. And so you were just doing at like five to 600 K. Right. And then you really pushed it up because even in a down market, what happens with luxury homes? Yeah. They'll sell as long as your product's good. Right. And as long as you got equity in the deal to be able to position yourself. Right. So, um, so you're, you're protecting yourself from a big shift by going into luxury. I do think so. Mm-hmm. I would still I say know, to the listener, hundred percent, pay attention to what you're doing. Yes. So like we can run through a deal in a second. You wanted to run through a deal. We can run through a deal in a second, but I, I have a lot of talks with money and my mentors and, and all sorts of people. And I, I think my, um, I think my trajectory is relatively safe, right? Yep. Like I could be sideswiped. We have some other big projects going on. I got big subdivisions going on and apartment buildings going on and all these things. But like, as far as the luxury brand is concerned, I, it's relatively equity safe. I mean, we could go down 40, 50% and still be okay. Right. So like, and by the way, if you are watching this on the Brent Daniels YouTube channel, or, or if you're listening to this just on the podcast, definitely check out the video. We're going to put up some of the pictures of some of these projects. This is going to blow your mind. The, uh, I mean, these luxury homes, they're castles. You're literally building castles. It's literally called a castle. Yeah, yeah. Your and, big one. Yeah. And here's the thing is I have fun with them mm-hmm. because you've been doing this for a while, yeah. right? money starts to lose its interest. It's not about not making more money and it's not about not, I'm more interested in building really good businesses. Sure. Like I talk to the same people you talk to and when we're talking about business, they're superior to me. They're light years ahead of me, right? And I'm like really like trying and grinding and then like just like a casual, like all you gotta do is this. And I'm like, what? Why didn't I think of that, Mm -hmm. right? And so we're always trying to do that. That is more appealing to me than the money, right? And so when you're like burning and turning them and you're going and you're doing this for years, um, you have to find what you want to do. And that's kind of what I was getting at earlier, which is like, I want to design my business to suit my life. Well, I love to design things. And it is the Achilles heel to a CEO. I will say that Mm -hmm. unless you hire designers, but me, I do all the design at this point. And so, um, so I'm pulled in because I got to pick out tile and I'm pulled in because I got to pick out floors and oh no, this accent wall and this and that, and we're going to run cedar here. Right. And so I am pulled into the business that way, but I, but I'm okay with it. Right. That's for now. The creativity. I mean, for now that, that doesn't burn out. You could be creative the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like there's, building there's, the there's business. Juice in all, it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's why it. I stay away from it. Honestly, Casey, that's why I was doing flips and I was like, I was too into it. I was like, you know, I was, <laughs> like we're going to lose a hundred thousand. Oh, we're gonna lose, oh, for it's sure. It's going to be balling. No, I was like, <laughs> no, but I'd be, I'd be up. I like sleeping and uh, you know, I, I like sleeping at night, not going to bed with a lot of, you know, my head going all over the place. Yeah. And I was thinking about, uh, tile and paint and doorknobs and and door stops and fans and fixtures. Oh, I mean, dude. all those things. There's so many things that go into it. Oh yeah, you got to. That find I was a... like, you know what? I'm gonna just. We're just gonna wholesale. You got to find a shut off switch. Yep. yep. What I found to be the my, most my shut off switch is wholesale it. Yeah, and you're really good at it. <laughs> that's and it. that's singularity of focus. And so what's really strange about it is I do all these things, but I have students also, and I I I just smash it into them like singularity of focus it's okay to do multiple things but learn the business fail at the business study the business delegate the business set it up like a business and then move on mm-hmm. and that's that whole don't kill both businesses with your thing right yeah um but you had said earlier in the conversation you had said like okay so you're flipping and then you started getting money right mm-hmm. and i think this is a good point to raising talk- money uh, yeah raising money raising and i think capital. this is a, a good point to talk about that which is that you will inevitably outgrow yourself if you are focused. So if that doesn't make sense, 
picture like four lines, right? Well, while you're on two, your head's on four. So you should be thinking about money on four, not money on two. Okay. And uh, Ryan, you got Ryan on mm -hmm. the show. Dude is outrageous, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. His head is on four. His money is like on the way to four. Right. But there was a time that, that he wasn't so focused on the money and he was focused on all these deals and he's really good he's an architect he's crafty he's an engineer he's like so good at making these analytical. deals analytical analytical yeah. and he yeah. can just build these deals right but his money wasn't right mm -hmm. and it's not that his like net profit wasn't right but like his uh private money or his loans weren't right and so i'm like dude you this is gonna catch up to you the good thing about ryan is he listens to everything right sure. and so he fixed his money his money's all right now he's building massive multi-families and commercial buildings and doing all sorts of stuff he's killing it but your your money needs to be on the forefront of everything so mm -hmm. while you're wholesaling and you're wholesaling to people you should be finding out who those lenders are oh, you should yeah. be finding out what those percentages are you should be putting yourself in front like hey i got all the deals and i'm sending all the deals and i get to pick the good ones i got really good ones would you want to loan money to me i have a crew that can do a flip right here or what Whatever the case is, you should you should be planting those seeds throughout the wholesale process, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's how we did it with private money. And it was like Gem State kind of got the credibility for Taylor Jean Homes. And then Taylor Jean Homes now has the credibility for Gem State. And then they kind of both feed the development because yep. I find land deals and then I have a build crew. And, and then now we build apartment buildings. Well, listen, and once the wind's behind your back like it is for you, people will come to you to give you money. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people see what you're doing. And when you make a splash by putting out a really, really, really unbelievable product, right? And and really making it something special. See, the, I think the beautiful thing that you did, and I, I remember seeing it like three years ago, is you got real creative with your flips, just like you were talking about. It was beautiful. It didn't feel the same. Everybody was in this cookie cutter, you know, do the the white cabinets and the stone and the white and the quartz countertops and the, you know, the, the, you know flooring that looks like wood but it's tile and they do it over yeah. and over and over and over mm -hmm. and, and it makes it easy for their crew you were like no i'm gonna go in with all these different all these different um uh features and appliances and fixtures and look and feel and i'm gonna make this house something special it's gonna stand out from all the other houses that are on the street and that there is always going to be a market for that not only that but when you make that splash you get attention when you get attention people the money follows that attention it does. You know what's funny is like I'm part of these big groups, right? Like Jason Medley, um, Matt Andrews, just collective genius. But not yeah, collective yeah. genius and and family mastermind. It's just like these phenomenal human beings, right? Mm -hmm. The the overwhelming, um, the overwhelming. Like when I show up, they're always like, "Oh, this dude does like the most beautiful houses," right? And it's funny because I do like on a monetary level, we make a lot of money off the luxury houses, but like we do a lot more mm -hmm. right but nobody is paying attention to that because they like to see like cool stuff mm -hmm. like i don't care what it is i just want to see some cool stuff like it'd be the same as if you were like yeah i got this 40k assignment we did this single family house or you're like hey i wholesaled this bed and breakfast check out how i broke it down i'm like bed and breakfast mm -hmm. and i want to like look at it right yeah. like i want to check out like how you did that deal um and so that was just kind of the evolution of it and i will say this about the flipping thing because this is like an educational piece right if you are going to come a little harder with your design, mm -hmm. understand that you have to compensate in some way. And that's usually going to look like work for somebody on the team. And so just for the record, for us, we go purchase our material all over the country. Mm. So I go buy in volume. Like I have semis bring me tile with like 40 different selections of title. We come to Phoenix and get ranges and sure. we go we go all over and get our material, right? Like so we're buying at a volume capacity. So it might not be that I am because I'm buying at volume, it might not be that I'm getting like a bet like I'm doing flips cheaper, right? Or builds cheaper, but I'm putting out a better product for the same price. Right that's kind of where I'm at. And if we save money and we get it cheaper, then cool. But really my my main goal is just to make sure the house is so dialed in that like the hands go up and the pens come out mm -hmm. and, and you know, you shake it all about. And you do, <laughs> you and know? you do. And well, well, it's just interesting because you start, 
and you find you find some deals and you wholesale them and you make some money and then you go and you go okay with this money i'd like to actually take this property down do a flip and you're like you know what with this flip i'm going to get creative and i'm going to do something outstanding it's not going to cost a tremendous amount more but it's going to be something that actually has a heart and soul to it it doesn't feel sterile it doesn't feel like the cookie cutter thing that everybody right. else is doing it has some life to it, it has some energy to it yeah right yeah. and that's coming from you to that house and so yeah. People see that and they recognize that. And then all of a sudden you start raising capital to the point where now you're doing developments. Listen, this is not rocket science. It really isn't. It's not rocket science. It just depends on what you want to do and what, what kind of business you want to grow. Do you want to stay like me and just do wholesaling and not, not worry about, you know, taking down these properties and raising funds and picking out all these things? That's one option. Nothing That's wrong the with, beautiful nothing thing. Nothing wrong with it. That's the beautiful thing. Do you want to just flip houses and keep it there? Do you want to develop? Do you want to just build your portfolio? Do you want to just wholesale, take that money and just buy rentals and never do a flip in your life? That's an option as well. Yeah. I just love that you're showing this path path here i mean look at this bill look at look at any skyscraper look at any 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 big uh hospital look at any big shopping center it all started with some guy or gal that found an opportunity made some money started doing some incredible work and then just took it to the next level like you're doing yeah that's how these businesses start this is how this whole this whole country has grown yeah i mean it's phenomenal and then raising money is just raising money then you get these real estate investing trusts that do these billion dollar oh, yeah. projects that's where it well, starts and you can i mean you can go so many different ways with that like we used to build our apartment buildings and sell them to the market right mm -hmm. now there's so much hedge fund money hedge fund money that they need to spend like they need to spend this money yeah and so you don't even need to go to the market you just sell your fully leased up, brand new construction apartment building to a hedge fund. You don't even got to work. I mean, it's done. The work's yeah. done. You sell it to him and it's easy. You know, we have a we have a mutual friend and he, he always says like, um, and I'll say this about the flipping and development and subdivisions and wholesaling and all this, and then you just doing wholesaling, yeah. right? It doesn't really matter what you're doing, but you should always just ask yourself, like, is it getting you closer to your goal? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And so like we've turned down and like, let's do a little um quick, uh, I don't know, how much time do we have? We're good. Uh, let's do a little like template on on how you can get some big wholesales real quick. Sure. So I, I am in the business of making money. Mm -hmm. Don't get it twisted. But I am also, I, I also measure time more than anything. Okay. That is the metric that I measure everything by. Maybe it be that I had felt like I lost some time or gave some time away earlier in my life or whatever the case is, but like my family is precious, right? Mm -hmm. I got a three kids, I got a wife, I got an immense amount of people that I feed. Um, I need to think, I need to like decompress. Like even on the airplane coming here, I'm like, yeah, dude, mm -hmm. I'm like by myself. Mm -hmm. and, and that's no shame to anyone in my group, but it's like, sometimes you just don't have room for yourself, right? right? And so we had, uh, I think I had gotten at one point in time, I had gotten two 200 unit uh, brand new construction contracts where the zoning was already done. So yeah. if anyone's familiar with zoning, it, they can't really deny you. You still have to like come with a good team and sure. stuff, but they have to give it to you. It is what it is. You just have to put out a good product and, and, and meet, conform to what they want. Listen, the government needs housing. They, they've zoned it for housing. Yeah. Now they just need somebody that's going to execute. Great way to say it. Yep. And so if you can be that guy and prove that you're going to be that guy, then you get it all day, right? Yep. And, we, and we are those people. But mm -hmm. I got two 200 units and I was like, so I'm asking uh, one of our friends. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, should I do this? And, and so we have a big, um, this is semi-personal, but I guess it's okay because what I would say is just pay attention to what you're doing. Like your risk tolerance is your risk tolerance and you're going to be willing to go through what you're going to be willing to go through. But we have a giant subdivision that, I mean, as far as money is concerned, like I don't, once you beat the game, you beat the game, mm -hmm. play a different game. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not as interested in being as busy as I used to be. Like once the subdivision's finished, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we can go play a new game. And so, so I'm asking this person and I'm like, should I do this 200 unit? It's a layup. And and just keep in mind, like my, my the way that I do my apartments, I probably spend an hour or two a week on my apartments. Sure. And we have hundreds of apartments being built right now, like legit, apparently. Yeah. Like I, I just, I don't spend much time. I, I get a hold of the architect. I get a hold of the developer. I get a hold of the city. They, I put them all together. I make sure the money's playing nice and I send them on their way and they do everything. And I make sure we pay on time and, and then my apartment buildings are done, right? Easy like, peasy. Lemon squeezy. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, and so, 
Yeah, and so, um, but I, but all the same, I, I was asking him, I'm like, do you think I should do this? And he just said, you know what, Casey, like, is it getting you closer to your goal or is it a distraction? Right. And I honestly had to answer like it's a distraction because my only, my only purpose right now I have a lot of purpose, but for business, my only right. purpose is finishing the subdivision. Yeah, everyone gets fed if I finish this subdivision. Mm -hmm. And so I how many? How many? It's thirty-five units. It's awesome. a hundred and twenty-two acre subdivision. But I bought it like mm. three, four years ago when the market was low, mm -hmm. and we're doing the whole thing, all the horizontal, all the vertical, everything, like the whole nine yards. I bought it right. Um, and you're you're putting in utilities. You're putting. I'm in doing everything. Infrastructure. You're doing yeah. everything, and we do that. Yeah. We do that. But yeah, with this one, it's 122 acres. They're all view lots. Um, just to give you an idea of like profit without saying the profit, like these houses were supposed to sell for six. Mm -hmm. They're all selling for like 1.2 or 1.3 right, right now. It's 35 houses, 122 acres. It's How many have you built? Uh, there, we're in the middle of getting it approved right now. Oh, got it. Yeah, we actually yeah. got denied the first time. Got it. And then, so we're in a little bit of a thing, but we'll get it pushed through. That's the other thing is be, be purposeful mm -hmm. and ask, believe and commit. That's like it. it's going to happen. We're not worried about it. We'll get it across. I just honestly think God's a trip. And I'm just like, I tell him all the time. I'm like, you're a weirdo. Like you're going to put me through all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is like, he's just massaging this thing. And the appreciation is just went up yeah. and up and up. And you know, I'm not saying what's going to happen, but we're going right. to finish this thing. Yeah. So anyway, I ask him and I'm like, da, da, da. And he, he says, no, I, I, I don't know, but you just do whatever's going to get you closer to your goal. And I had to think about it. And my only purpose is to finish this subdivision. And this is a distraction. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if I'm making 20 mil, 15 mil, whatever it was. I think it was actually like close to 15 mil for that yeah. apartment building. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll wholesale it. So we wholesaled it, made 200K. Mm -hmm. Right after I got that one, I got another one that was zoned R40 in Meridian. Got it under contract. That was actually one of Ryan's deals. Got it under contract and wholesaled it, made another 200K. This was in the same month. So it's a 400K just off those two, right? And we probably, we had a ton of other deals. But my point to the whole thing is that like, if you're playing in the big leagues, mm -hmm. you're gonna get big deals. Of course. Right? So like I, all the time, I'm we're getting 1.5, $2 million land deals that are like, you know, maybe one or two houses on it or something like that. And I just look at my rotation and ask Zeb if it makes sense. Zeb runs my companies. Did you get to meet Zeb in yeah, Florida? Yeah. yeah. So he runs my com. Oh no, he was in Phoenix. Zeb? Yeah, Zeb wasn't with me. My dad was with me in Florida. Yeah. So anyway, Zeb runs my companies, oh, but yeah. I I don't make that many decisions anymore. Yeah. Right. Like I just gotta like let him run the company, and so I'll ask him, and I'll be like, I'll be like, you want to do it? And he says no. We wholesale it. So we get it for two, we sell it for two, four, sell it for two, three, sell it for two, two, whatever mm -hmm. we're going to sell it for. And we just move on. We want to keep it. Then we keep it. Point being that always, if you're going to build from the foundation, I, I will, I'll say this way. My suggestion is this, is that if you're going to build a wholesale company first and then grow off that wholesale company, never forget that the wholesale company is the heart of that company. Love it. Whether it's development, whether it's flipping, whether it's whatever, because you can always wholesale any of those companies. Mm hmm at any time, yeah. uh, getting a, another thing is like not building apartments, right? So you can get it entitled and you can get the paperwork ready and you can get the drafts done and you can do everything. Well, then you have paper, wholesale it. Mm -hmm. You can get probably five X on your money by wholesale and you never even have to build a building at all. You just got to know how to work the system to get the building approved. Well, and I think it's important to also look at how much can you sell for? How much can you sell the paper for? How much can you sell the contract for? Assign it for? A wholesale deal versus if you take this all and it takes the next year, 18 months to get this done, what's your net? You know what I mean? And if you look at it and you go, okay, if in this, if I can make 400,000 on those two apartments and I can make, you know, a couple million over here, is it, is it worth it to get these couple mil or is it worth it to just take this 400,000 now and, and free up and free up my mind and my plate to do something else that's more in line with what your goal is. My mind. It just depends. My mind, yeah. right? Yeah. Like peace of mind. That's time. it. And the other thing is this, and you kind of just said it and alluded to it, but what are you good at? Mm -hmm. So if you're not good at building apartments. Don't build apartments. Don't build apartments. <laughs> That's why you don't see me building my apartment. I'm really good at building houses, yeah. but you don't see me building my apartments. My right. developer builds my apartments and I pay him well for to build my apartments, but mm -hmm. I'm just, it's not my space. Yeah. I, my time is not utilized well there. Yeah. Right. So awesome. Yeah, man. How do people get a hold of you? Uh, you can, 
I'm so horrible. Uh, or, or or whatever. Somebody on your yeah. staff. Maybe maybe they're in Boise. Maybe they no. Want to be I part have of Kohler your... setting up all of our stuff. But right now, you can just message me, Casey Ames, um, TaylorGeneHomes.com. You can leave a message there. Uh, PM me. Get my phone number. I'm willing to talk, chat, help wherever I can. I'm, yeah. Know. Well, first of all, we got to ring this bell for that 400k, right? 400k. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. You better ring it hard. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into That's there. <laughs> well, no, 400K in those two apartments. I mean, it's, I think it's just absolutely incredible. And it's just the. I think the, the important heart of this conversation is you start, you know, if you've never done a deal before, but you have that that pilot light inside your belly, right? That's it's lit, but maybe you've you've gotten into other responsibilities or you've gotten into other industries or you have a job or you're part of the military, you're doing this type of thing and you have that dream of of being a real estate developer or investor or owning a lot of properties or just having that financial freedom. It starts with doing your first deal. It starts with getting it under your belt, getting, you know, crossing that bridge from faith that you can do it to it being a fact, and then just building off of that and keep having that faith that you can do bigger things and, 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 and incredible things and creative things. Right. And then just building off of that. And you you are the example of that. Well, right. Th yeah. Thank you. Um, people like you let us be that, right. Like, um, I mean, you did the work. You made I, so many calls. I, dude, I you here's the deal. The I work harder than anyone, <laughs> right? The, the, the and I'm getting to a stage in my life where I'm not working as hard, but I worked hard to get it set up to where I don't have to work as hard. But like the Bible says it, like dig your own holes, right? So I went out and did that. Still though, I didn't ever recreate the wheel. Right. I just did what smarter men or men who had done it before yep. had done and i just listened well i was a good student and i just said okay and and you know i would challenge if i didn't think that that was my i would ask about it of course but at the same time you know they, they were pro they were proven and so i just followed men like you and you know tom and mike and jason and there's just a whole bunch of them that like i just for a long time i just did that and then once you once you the, the wheelchair pops off or whatever it is, right? Like the, the uh, training wheels pop yeah. off, then you can cruise and do your own thing. But right. in the beginning, just listen, be a good student, That's awesome. learn. And, and then I think what you said, apply, right? That's it. Like you got to get well, rid listen, of that I analysis mean, paralysis. Yeah. And, and I think one of the beautiful things that you're an example of is um, you didn't overthink it. You took the instruction, you, you, you just took the action. You did. I remember having conversations with you in my old, old, old office in 2017. <laughs> no joke. 2017. And we're talking about cold calling. We're talking about some of the leads that you're doing. We're talking about how it's been and how to stay consistent and all these things. We were having these conversations. I remember it yeah. because I remember seeing the progression of you and your family and your parents yeah. just absolutely go incredible once you guys really opened it up in Boise. So. Yeah. Uh, I celebrate you, man. I, I'm so excited to see what you do. I'm your biggest cheerleader. That truly. Guy, yeah. I mean, you are just doing some phenomenal things and your family's fantastic. You know what I mean? So, um, love you guys. And, and I'm just excited to see what the next, you know, four five, 10, 20 years looks like. I mean, it's incredible, but it started with wholesaling. It started with getting that. So yeah, congratulations. A pleasure. My yeah. friend. Awesome. Thank you for being yeah. on here. Um, guys reach out to Casey. Uh, if you want to check out his work, uh, Taylor Jean homes that's with a j j e n e homes we'll put it in the show notes uh definitely check it out uh, a huge inspiration especially if you've got that creative mind and you're looking for something that's really uh an incredible product you got to de definitely check that out and if you're interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing it is the ttp program it is the ttp coaching ttp family go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash ttp wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. Check it out. If it feels good in your gut, then sign up for a call. I look forward to working with you personally. And that's it. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Casey. Yeah. And I encourage everybody to go out there and talk to people. Love you guys. Talk See to you later. People.